cord button here so we have it. All right, so welcome again to Webinar Wednesday, uh, the May edition, and tonight we're going to talk about the dental internet marketing workflow. My name is Dr. David Wink. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a practicing general dentist in New York City, and I'm the president of Short Hills Design, which is an internet marketing company for dentists and physicians. So let's take an overview of what we're going to do. So we're going to do our five-minute introduction. Then we're briefly going to talk about the web design workbook for dentists and an overview of the workflow, which is where this comes from. We're then going to jump into talking about web development for around 10 minutes. Then we're going to talk about phase two, driving traffic, phase three, finding out what's working, and then we'll leave it open to some questions. So let's do our introduction. So basic computer knowledge, this is really just conceptual. Anything that you learn here, I would expect that you would, certainly you're welcome to try and do it yourself, but you can obviously have your web developer or your web person do that for you. It certainly depends on you know, whatever is uh, most convenient for you and your level of comfortableness with technology. So, or your comfort level with technology. So taking notes, the recording will be available as always a few days after the presentation. For those of you who've done webinar Wednesday before, you will um, get a copy of that uh, via email. And if you want a copy of the slides, feel free to email me and I will send you a copy. Now, you can use the raise your hand feature if you want to ask a question. I think it's a great feature and I encourage you to use it. I will try and answer them kind of as they come in, but certainly if there are questions that I think will take too long, I will stick around after and uh, answer the questions. I just don't want to keep people past 45 minutes because I promised. So the dental internet marketing workflow. And what's the major use of this? The, the entire point of this webinar is to understand where in the process everything fits. And by everything I mean, Facebook, social media, web development. So we're not going to talk about necessarily, we are going to get into some detail, but I want you to understand where things are in the big picture. That's the most important thing. So let's briefly talk about the book. Um, the Web Design Workbook for Dentists is a book that I wrote to give people an overview from, from 10,000 feet about what you have to know about building a dental website and about dental internet marketing. Um, and what's, what's great about it is, is it's designed so that you don't need any technical knowledge or technical background, and it's there so that you know what to ask, what to do before you buy. And, it, and that doesn't mean buying from me. From whatever vendor you're going to work with, if you're going to do, for example, um, AdWords, it will help and guide you through some of the things you have to know about AdWords. Obviously, the book is something that's constantly in development because things change, but that's the concept. And it's great for staff members because sometimes as the dentist, we're just too busy to do everything, and I get it. So let's take a look at the overview from the big, big picture. Um, step one, phase one, is initial website planning, de development, and setup. Phase two is driving traffic. So whether you do that with search engine optimization, social media, pay-per-click, which is AdWords, or website marketing, phase two is driving traffic. Phase three is website analytics and tracking and conversion optimization. And what that means is, what's working and what isn't working. It's very, very important. And phase four is website maintenance and backups. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail about phase four here. I will mention it now though, basically, please make sure that you have a backup for your website. If you are running WordPress especially, there's no reason you shouldn't have your own backup. If you do ask your web company for a backup, they will sometimes um, kind of give you that look that we give when someone asks for x-rays. But certainly, you're entitled to have a backup. You should have a backup. And if someone gives you a problem, you can say, I was at a webinar where someone who knows what he's talking about said we should have a backup. And the reason is, is because things happen, and it's nice to have your own backup. Certainly, if you're on a proprietary platform, you won't be able to take that backup and restore it. But certainly, if you're on a platform like WordPress, you should absolutely be able to have a backup. And website maintenance, periodically make sure things are working. Uh, whether you want to test your contact form once a month or whether a company goes in if it's WordPress and updates it for you or you update, just make sure that's done. That's kind of, you know, you know, changing your oil is really what that is. So let's talk about phase one. Phase one is really building your website. 
And what you want to do overall is you want to build your website to Google standards. And I can't stress that enough. Uh, the reason being that we don't know what kind of competition you're going to face or not face. And that's why a competition analysis right now is not helpful. So regardless, I want you to come prepared. And let's think about this in terms of the um, in terms of hockey. I was an ice hockey goalie in dental school. And the truth of the matter is I had no idea where I was going to have to stop a puck. And so I wore left, you know, left and right pads. I wore a chest protector and a, and a helmet and, and all the like because I didn't know if I was going to have to make a save with my left hand, my right pad, or my glove or my blocker. So I came prepared with everything. And that's why I have no idea what your competition is going to be. If nobody shot a puck up high to my glove side and I didn't have to make a catch, well, then great. I had it just in case. Eventually, somebody will. So I come prepared. And so the same concept I give you for Google Webmaster Standards. And the idea here, again, is that I want, you know, if you were building a website with us tomorrow or with any other company tomorrow, I want you to make sure that it's, again, built to these baseline standards. Because if it's built to the standards, that means that at, at worst, you're in the conversation. I mean, at best, you'll rank really highly, you do well, you'll win. But absolute worst, you're in the conversation. And if you're not in the conversation, and then you want to eventually be in the conversation, it becomes a real problem. You know, I don't want to be on the ice and then decide that I, um, I don't have the right equipment. And that would be really bad. So I think that that's something that we definitely want to make sure that uh, you're doing now. And it looks like there is a question here. Okay. Someone asked how you back up a Squarespace website. And the answer is, I don't know if there's a really good way to back up a, a, Squares, excuse me, a Squarespace website. What you can do, though, you know, in terms of taking Squarespace going from Squarespace to somewhere else, what I would recommend that you do is at least copy and paste each page into a text editor or into Word. So at least that way you have a copy of your content. That's really the most important thing. I don't think you can go from Squarespace to WordPress or like that, but certainly that's a way to save your content. Uh, and again, I hope that answers the question. If not, you can ask another question and we can come back to that. So at the end of the day, I want you prepared for no matter what's going to come at you. And that way a competition analysis doesn't matter. So the website goals that I have for my clients are the same goals that I have for you. And those goals are number one, I want you to own everything. I don't care. Um, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that everything you have there is yours. So whether it's going to be your, your domain names I want you owning, your, your, uh, your web hosting account I want you in charge of, your backups, it's critically important. And so the other thing that we want to do is I want you to be able to manage the site yourself. You don't have to manage it yourself, but you certainly are able to do it. For example, today I noticed that in my, um, in my nose cone, I was uh, making a temp with my nose cone, and there's a tiny little air leak between where the, 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 um, the cabling is and the back end of the handpiece. So I certainly could call the repair company and have them do that, or I could take a scissor, which I did, snip it, you know, cut away that, you know, the, the kind of uh, breaking piece of cord and put it right back in there, and we're in good shape. But the point is that you have the ability to do it, and that's really important. Next. So, again, the Ideal Dental website also is non-proprietary, excuse me, non-proprietary and open source. So what that means is a system like WordPress. And the reason I like WordPress, not just because it is uh, what I use, but the idea is that I want to make sure that you can do whatever you want with the website. And so there are certain proprietary platforms, and I'm sure they're good for certain things. But at the end of the day, for my clients, I want you to have the ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. I was lecturing for the Academy of Pross a while back, and I said I could go home tonight and have no clients. And that's true, because everybody has their own, owns their own stuff, so they don't really need me. I mean, I hope they do need me, but that's that's the idea here. And so, um, so let's so so in terms of WordPress, that's really why I like that the best. So, what what would you want to own? I want you to own the domain. I want you to own the Google account. That's especially critical. You're going to use Google Analytics. You might use Google AdWords. You should use Google Webmaster Tools, which is now Google Search Console. We will, for example, when we do AdWords with the client, the client owns the AdWords account, and we're there as a manager administrator, 
and we can be removed at any time. Same thing with analytics. Because at the end of the day, if you decide to leave, which you know people do, that's okay. I don't want you to have to beg me to get access to your your accounts and your analytics. That's not fair. I liken this to denture where I say it's a um, – I would never make a denture out of a proprietary acrylic where only I have the burr. You own the content. That's critical. Now, sometimes when you do get a website, you do have content that comes with it. When we build a website – and I've kind of loosened up on this over the years. When you build a website, uh, sometimes you just don't have the ability to write your own content or you don't want to. And that's you know that's okay. I really, really, really prefer – that people write their own content, but we happen to offer, you know, a one-time licensing fee for a set of 15 pages of content. I discourage people from using it, so I want them to write their own, but certainly, you know, it is something that exists. That being said, better content is content that you own. And so whenever we build a new site for somebody, we have them write their content or we write it. But if we're migrating someone from another platform or rebuilding, one of the questions we ask is, do you own the content? So if you own it, we bring it to the next website. If you don't own it or you don't have a license for it to use it, then you can't use it. And most most companies will license it so you can use it while they're still a client of theirs. For us, you know, you pay for it once and we license it and then do whatever you want with it. That's the deal. But that is something to think about. Also, you own the stock images. This is huge. Um, for those of you on Dental Town, that you'll see that with stock images, don't trust that your web developer quote unquote, took care of it for you, for the images. That's a real problem because at the end of the day, iStock Photo, Getty Images and those those image sites, they if they find you're using an image and they ask you to show the license for it and you don't have it, it could be a, a fine in the thousands. So what you should look at here is to make sure that you own the stock images. What we do is we have the client create the iStock Photo account or the Photo Dune account, and then we go in there and tell the client what to get. So that way the client owns the license for all that stuff. Same thing with the theme. We don't do themes anymore. At this point, we're really doing custom builds. But certainly in the past when we use themes, we absolutely have the client own the license for the theme. And for backups. For WordPress, we use a plugin called Backup Buddy. And that's, I think, 80 bucks a year. Um, and our clients own the license for that. We don't. And the reason is, is because I want my clients to have a copy of their own backup that they can use whenever they'd like. Next. So this is really important. It's what we call NAP, name, address, phone number. And I'm going to do a totally separate webinar on it. I think it's not next month, the month after. One of the most important things now is the ability to make sure that your name, address, and phone number are consistent across the web. And like I said, we're going to do a whole webinar on that, but it's important that, you know, I'm either listed as David Wank DMD or David A. Wank DMD, but consistently across the web. You don't want David Wank DMD, David A. Wank DMD, or by mistake, I've seen me come up as David Wank DDS. That's not me. And so that's important that that's consistent. Moz.com is a website, I think, and it will, uh, Moz.com local. That you see the link at the bottom there. I think they charge something like 80 or maybe it's $100 a year and it helps you make your listings consistent. I think it's fantastic and I recommend that all of our clients get it. I have no affiliation with them and I like them. So next. So let's talk about those standards briefly. So there's all sorts of things that Google wants you to do uh, when you're building your website and all sorts of things that go into how your web page would rank. So for example, I'm in Tribeca. Uh, I, for those of you who know me, I work for a large health center as a salary dentist. I couldn't run my own business and run my companies at the same time, although I, I'd like to try. But at the end of the day, if someone did a search for Dentist Tribeca, a lot of these features go into it. And some of the things that go into it, as you can see here, are, for example, um, let me find that cursor here in the left column. Is it mobile ready? That's huge. If your website is mobile ready, is not mobile ready, doesn't show up the way it should, on an iPad or an iPhone or Android devices, you're going to be penalized in your rankings at least. Same thing here with title tags. You've got it, and don't worry what this means, your web developer knows. Uh, title tags, heading tags, all, ooh, all tags are twice. So all of those things are important in terms of making sure that your website is built to these standards. Because at the end of the day, if there's 10 of us in Tribeca who want to rank for Dentist Tribeca, Google's going to look at a lot of these factors. And if 
your website doesn't have a lot of these things, then you may not rank as well. Now, if you're in the middle of Mile City, Montana, where there's only one dentist for 300 miles or something, then it might not be as big of an issue. But here, for example, we're going to get to this. Your Google My Business profile, your navigation, accurate name, address, phone number, all of these things are things that should be done. The speed of your page, um, those are all things that go into the ranking that I consider as baseline. And so while we do have an idea, as you see on this slide, of some of the things that Google wants to look at, we don't know what the relative uh, value is of them or the relative weight. So for example, I could tell you title tags we know are important. So is page speed. Right now, you know, reviews might be important in ranking you. I have no idea. And no one really has any idea if the number of reviews really make a difference. Same thing with your bounce rate. Does that make a difference? I'm not sure. You want to keep it low. SSL, they've been talking about making the web secure. I don't know if right now that's a critical ranking factor. I know that being responsive is. That's where the website shrinks to fit the, um, the, pro uh, the, the proper window on your phone or your tablet. Um, having alt tags, which are text equivalents to your images. So that's something that's really important to consider. And so when we're doing it, that's why we built a standard because I don't know who's going to come and I want to make sure that you are positioned properly. Now, there is another question. Let me take a look. Now, someone said, do you lose your rank as if you switch from one website platform to another? And the answer generally is a great question is no, because what you do is you use something called 301 redirect and your web developer knows what that means. But basically what you say to them is if you have the same name, if you're going from shorthillsdesign.com slash meet Dr. Wank to on Squarespace to shorthillsdesign.com meet Dr. Wank on WordPress, it doesn't matter. If you're going from shorthillsdesign.com slash meet Dr. Wank on Squarespace to shorthillsdesign Dr. David Wank on WordPress, you've got to do a redirect or, or WordPress or anywhere. And what that redirect does, it says to Google, hey, Google, that page that ranked well, that was shorthillsdesign.com forward slash uh, meet Dr. David Wank. That page is now going to be slash, you know, meet Dr. Wank. So Google, so you say, Google, this is what the old page was and that had all those rankings and all those good things about it. And now that page is over here. It's the same page. And the same thing if you're switching domains. If we, be, if we went from Short Hills Design to, um, uh, you know, uh, Long Hills Design, we would say shorthillsdesign.com slash Dr. Wank is now longhillsdesign.com slash Dr. Wank in a 301 redirect. And so that's something you have to do. It's a little technical, but that's but it is very doable. And when you switch, they say you keep a good you know 95% of, of that ranking. All right, so let's talk about Google Maps and Google My Business. So Google Maps is for consumers, period. You want to go to the uh, to Starbucks, you type in Starbucks in Google Maps, and it shows you Starbucks. Terrific. <laughs> Here's Short Hills Design, for example. You This is an older slide, but you type in Short Hills Design, for example. You see me on the map. You click the button. You can get directions. Now, what Google Maps does is that Google said, look, you know what? It would be a really great idea if we could um, basically be the yellow pages of the web. And so what Google did is they made a location, a page, so to speak, for every physical retail location they could find. And what they said is, hey, vendor, hey, Short Hills Design, you know, if you want people to find you, basically, if you sign up and you give us your information for free, we can help coordinate things for you. So Google My Business is the program for businesses to manage the listings. So all the stuff you see here where it says the address, the phone number, the hours, review, blah, 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 blah. So again, I did search for Short Hills Design here because I wanted to show you this, um, this area over here, but this is information that I had entered into Google My Business. And so Google basically says, hey, listen, you have a listing here. We want to make sure that that listing is correct and well-populated. And as a reward for filling it out, we'll put, you know, we'll, we'll make sure the information is there. Now, does it does it affect your ranking? Uh, if you look back here in the um, the the one of the ranking slides, uh, the Google My Business profile, the answer is I don't know. But we really do think that it's the kind of thing where if Google says you should have a complete 
Google My Business profile, it makes sense to have a complete Google My Business profile. I don't know if uh, me and, you know, if there are five dentists in Tribeca and four of us have not, the four of them have the profile not filled out and I have the profile filled out, will I rank ahead? I don't know. There's a lot of factors that go into it. But since I don't know what that factors are going to be, or at least their weight, I'm going to do it anyway. And it's something you should do. And it's free. You can go to google.com slash business. And we basically twist arms. I twist arms to make sure that my clients fill it out. And filling it out doesn't mean 90%. Filling it out means 100%. So there you go. And it will tell you. So phase two, driving traffic to your website. I'm a little behind on time, but I'm going to keep going. I'll let you know at the 45-minute mark. So phase two is driving traffic. And the key here is there are many ways to drive traffic, and you have to see what works for you. So people ask me all the time when I lecture, you know, David, I spend this much on Facebook or this much on AdWords. Is that good? And the answer is I have no idea, and it's what works for you. I can tell you now that I live on TempGrip as my cement. And if someone's going on vacation, I use Duralon and Lubricant. Now, someone else might not like TempGrip. I have plenty of people that I work with. They use Tempon, and they're very happy. And they use Tempon NE, and they're very happy. I just don't. It's just, you know, just what I use because it works for me. So when you drive traffic to your website, the goal, obviously, is new patients. And in truth, I don't care how you get there, whether it's through organic SEO or social media or whatever you have to do. Um, to drive traffic to your website. Maybe you write an article in a, in a newsletter every month or it's a client of mine who's a pediatric dentist and she writes an article, I think every quarter or something in a, in a community magazine that links back to her. Terrific. Anything you do to drive traffic is what you want to do. So search engine optimization, we're going to skip a little bit, but the idea is everything that you do with search engine optimization and with AdWords and all of these things is to drive traffic. So organic search is based on the content of your website. So you can take a look here. If you did a search for used car dealer, this is the organic information. That's totally based on what Google sees on your website. Paid search is, is AdWords. Well, there are other programs, but AdWords is the most well-known one. That's where you make an ad and you pay when people click. So, so look here at Tom's Ford. It says what happened here is that Tom's Ford set up their AdWords and basically said, hey, when someone does a search for used car dealer, put our used card up there. And so did Hertz and so did VW and all these other companies. How you rank on there is out of the scope of this discussion, but that's really what AdWords is. So organic search is based on what page does Google think is most relevant about used cars, I mean, that, about used car dealer, and those are the ones it picked. Again, we're going to be doing an SEO webinar another time to get into how that works. Um, but you can't pay for this at the bottom. You can't pay to move those. However, if you look at these where it has paid search, there is, you know, how you pay is part of that and part of the formula for how you get, get on there. This is just an overview of search engine terminology. We don't really need to get into that too much. So foundations. People get nervous, and I see it all, of, all. Excuse me, I see it a lot. Oh my gosh, Google's changing its algorithm. What are we going to do? And for people like you and me who are doing what we're supposed to be doing, we're not buying links, we're not scamming, we're not we're doing your best every day, writing articles or writing pages on your website, whatever you're doing. Generally, you do not have to worry about algorithm changes. Algorithm changes are really designed to weed out the cheaters. And sometimes when Google does do a um, when Google does do a change like that, and they find that it does screw people up, they, they will reverse it. Hold on, there was one question here. All right, somebody asked about on-site and off-site linking. So I will come back to that very quickly. So on-site SEO and off-site SEO. And what that is, is, um, and I'm happy to stay after to talk more about it. On-site SEO are things you do on your website. So the title tags, the header tags, H1, H2, the alt tags, your keywords, the speed of your site. Those are all things you control. Off-site SEO are things you don't control, like who links to you, how old is your domain. If you're in Canada, you should probably have a web host in Canada. If you're in the United States, have a web host in the United States. 
So what winds up happening is when, if you've done your on-site SEO properly, that's great. But once you're at a point where all of your competitors have off-site SEO, then becomes more of an issue. Okay, so in terms of off-site SEO, link building is one of those things. There's an entire webinar I did actually, um, was it le le the month before last? You can jump on uh, shorthelldesign.com under resources and find that webinar. And there's a separate webinar where we have a Q&A with Justin Morgan, the dental marketing guy, who talks to us about links, which, which is great. He answers a lot of questions. But basically, links are popularity. And if someone links to you, that means you must be popular. That's a gross oversimplification, and I encourage you to look at that webinar for more details. But the idea is that if one website here on the left links to this website number two, that makes number two more popular. And these are, of course, uh, uh, glasses of link juice. And we don't really call – no one calls it that officially. That's kind of what we call it behind the scenes. But obviously, site one seems to have a lot of link juice, a lot of popularity or authority. And by passing that authority, that link to site number two, it does help site number two become more authoritative, which is why those links are hard to get. So what I tell all of my clients that I'm telling you is to get the free links you can. Now, not all of them pass link juice, but certainly it's absolutely worth getting them anyway. And that's the ADA. You know, if you're an AGD member, get it. If you're a member of a, special, a specialty organization, AAP, APD, any of those organizations. Uh, if you're involved in um, the Academy of Pros or the, um, um, what is it, the Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, any of that stuff. Local Chamber of Commerce. The local chamber of commerce usually will link to uh, the members, you know, the list of the members and link to them, get the link. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but certainly it can hurt. Same thing, any volunteer organizations. There was a client of mine who he and his wife did some of the gardening for their church. And the ch on the church's website, it said, thank you, Dr. and, and Mrs. Such and Such for you know doing the, the gardening work for our church and this and that. And they linked back to them. And that's great. And of course, newspaper or print articles, if you um, go to the kid's school and you do a little talk to the kids about uh, cavities and toothbrushing, and maybe online on the PTA website or whatever it happens to be, they say, hey, Dr. Wink went to the school and talked to the kids about brushing teeth. Then on the bottom, it says something along the lines of, Dr. Wink is a dentist in Tribeca and you know he loves treating kids. Visit him at www.whatever. And that's a great link also. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about on driving traffic, and this is new, is lead generation. It's something that I just started to do. And real quickly, the problem is that everybody is, you know, has a set site that's, well, they're, they're, they're trying to build a site to Google standards. They're doing SEO. They're, they're doing keyword research, which we've discussed in, I think, in January's webinar. And now what I'm doing, and this is a test program, is that we are testing this. And so basically... What lead generation is, you want to offer services to people who want those specific services. And that's nothing new. If a denture patient comes in, you're not going to offer them whitening. And certainly, you know, that's – and if a patient with a full dentition comes in, you're not going to give them samples of, um, of denture adhesive. So anybody who might be interested in a service is called a lead. And we don't usually call them that at, at dentist, in dentistry, but in marketing, we call anyone who wants something from you is a lead. And lead generation, of course, is getting is how do you generate these leads? How do you get their attention? In your office, when you put the um, the whitening brochures or the cosmetic dentistry brochures in your uh, in your waiting room, you're doing lead generation. And what this lead generation is, is doing it online. So what we're offering now is lead generation with implants and Invisalign. So what happens is is and, we'll, and we're gonna. So what happens is, one, you decide what you want to promote. Two, you figure out who might make a good lead. Certainly, denture patients are not good leads for Invisalign. And then you offer them something to grab their attention, whether it's a, a downloadable guide about Invisalign. We call that a lead magnet um, or a list of common questions and answers or an educational email series, just as an example. So what we're doing is here's how it works with our dental implant, mar implant marketing automation campaign. So basically, the visitor does something. And in our case, they visit your website. They visit your website, and after a certain amount of time on your website or on your implant page, a sign-up pops up that says, hey, would you like to learn more information about dental implants? They sign up. 
and they become a lead. And then what happens is they receive an automated email campaign. So over time, a series of relevant dental implant emails go out to them, generic, you know, with your logo and your branding, and you know, the, the click to contact us goes to your website. But the idea is that they teach them about implants, introduce the practice, encourage them to call you. And what this does is it kind of works in the background for you. So if someone's browsing your website, after a certain amount of time, a pop-up comes up and says, hi, you want to learn more about implants? They say, yes, great. And automatically, you're going to start sending them personalized emails. Right now, we're doing three at a time or a series of three that are very um, – they're not aggressive. They're not marketing emails. They're informational with they're informational with a gentle nudge to you know contact us if you have questions. And that's just you know what's up and coming. If anybody's interested in that, let me know. Right now we're testing it, and so the fee is incredibly low, basically just to cover our costs. So we actually might make it on time. So let's talk about now um, phase three, and that's kind of saying and that's seeing what's working. So in terms of what's working, now, Google Analytics, everybody should have Google Analytics. It's free. You can go to google.com slash analytics and sign up for it if you haven't already. It's very easy to install. If you have a problem, let me know and I will help you. But your web developer should do this for you already. And so they let you look at KPIs, which are key performance indicators. And that's you know something that we steal from, from, the, marketing, uh, from the marketing vocabulary. But... KPIs, or just key performance indicators, things I need to know. Every website should have Google Analytics, and installing it is very straightforward. I put a star there because, you know what? For my endodontist, molar endo is very straightforward. For me, I haven't done an endo in 15 years, so it's not straightforward for me. But it's for someone who knows what they're doing, it's very easy to do. Now, but the idea of Google Analytics is you ask a question, and Analytics gives you the answer. So, for example, if we think about the office, I have a picture of crowns here. These kind of look like, well, you know, they're not cap tech, but you look at like the gold, it almost looks like cap techs from, from, from the old days, or for those who are using it now still. I always like cap techs. But the idea is that you can say to your staff, uh, staff, how many crowns do I do a you know, month on average? Oh, Dr. Wank, you do 50. Okay, great. Wait a second. It says here in January, I only did five. Why is that? Oh, my God, what happened? Uh, Dr. Wank, that's when you were on vacation for a month. Oh, okay, great. So it's not a problem. So, you know, sometimes dips in the data give you more information than the actual not dips in the data. But the idea is that you want to look and see what's going on because it can give you ideas. So I don't need to know how many crowns did I do on number 19s that were Brux years on patients between the age of 20 and 40 that I saw on Fridays. I, I don't need that information. At least at that level, I don't. Certainly, if I start to have crowns that don't fit, I'm going to say, which lab did we use? And does it turn out that it's only the, um, you know, the Emaxes that aren't fitting? Because, you know, that's when you go deeper into the data. But for now, I just want to know, are we doing the number of crowns a month that we're supposed to be doing? So in Google Analytics, here are just some questions and answers. For example, how many new visit visitors came to my website this month from my local area? That's a really good question. And is the number increasing or decreasing? Uh, I'd like to know, you know, if we have 50 visits a month from our local area and then it drops down to 10, I want to know why. Or if it bumps up to 70, I want to know why. Did we do something? If we're paying for an SEO campaign and, you know, four, five, six months in, we're not seeing any increase in the number of visitors, forget about new patients, you can say to the SEO company, hey, part of SEO I know is driving traffic. So if we're driving traffic, how come I started in January, you know, or in November with 50 visitors a month from my area? I've been paying you. It's been six months. I'm still only getting 50. And the data doesn't lie. You have that data. And so certainly that's something that you can obviously bring up to them, but it puts you in control. I have an entire webinar on analytics. I think it was February or March. Maybe it was February of basic analytics. You should look at that for the dental team. It's, it's a very general overview. Uh, and I think it's really helpful. Which website sends the most visitors? That's important as well. Are we paying for ads on a site that doesn't send traffic? And I wrote that twice on purpose. Um, I had a client of mine. She's a, actually one of my few non-dental clients. Every year pays for an ad on a website of a friend of a friend of a friend. And she feels bad canceling the ad. Doesn't know how to break it to them. And I said, look, 
Well, we can look at analytics and we see that you get three visitors a year from that ad. So it doesn't pay for you to pay for it. I mean, because you're not getting any new clients from it, because you told me that. You know, you're only getting three visits a year. So certainly you can go to this person and say, look, we're not getting any traffic from it. So why am I paying for it? And exactly the same thing. If you were doing a, um, a postcard campaign or a magazine campaign, don't laugh. Some people are. And, and you know, if it's done well, it will be done. You know, a magazine. But you don't want to just say, you know, www. You know, Dr. 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 com. You want to do, do Dr. Wankdentist.com slash spring, spring 17, 17 or whatever, whatever it happens to be. So on that, so on card, that card, they'll tell you they'll tell you a special, special link that says, that says you know, short of you know, short of slash summer special. Summer special. So that way so that you know, we know everybody, everybody who came, came that summer, that summer special, special page came from that postcard. postcard. And if you look at analytics, I've got no business from that postcard. You can say what's going on. Then of course, then it's of my course home is my home page effect. I don't want to I don't get want to bounce get around right now. Right now. Uh, again, uh, again, I discussed it in the, in the, in the analytics, analytics webinar. webinar. But, but if someone, someone comes to the home page on my website, website and, then and then they leave within two seconds, seconds, something's not right. Not right. And that's the thing you should know. So before I start sending out those ads or whatever it happens to be, shouldn't I make sure that people who come to my page, without me paying them or without me prompting them, that they stay? That's something analytics can do. Now. Conversion, we're finishing up now. Conversion optimization. Just give me one second here. Okay, so conversion optimization. Give me one sec. So conversion optimization. What you want to do once you have, once you have landing pages, just like pay-per-click, for example. When somebody clicks on uh, a Google ad and winds up on your, let's say, your implants page, the, um, the question becomes is, is that page working to drive new patients? And if it is, that's great. But if it's not, what you want to do is split test that, which means do variations. And so, for example, when I first got temp grip from the, uh, from the vendor, I didn't switch all of my clients over to temp grip. All of my clients, all of my patients. I still used, I forget what I was using, Temp on NE or probably Zone, whatever it was. I decided to only try it with a few of them and not all of them because I didn't want to be in a situation where if it didn't work out, that all of my temporaries fell out. So I did most people with Zone or whatever I was using, added a few with, with Temp Grip, saw that it was working, and then I kept it. Now, also, and then... You increase your conversion rate, your profit, without an increase in spending. So the idea is that if I tell you that you can, um, that for every four hundred dollars you spend, we can generate an Invisalign patient, and that's consistent over you know four months, I could then say to you comfortably, "Listen, I want you to spend eight hundred bucks a month because then we'll get two new patients." And that's all that that is. And of course, rinse and repeat to make it more and more efficient. Again, we will do. I have a separate webinar on this that we will do, but the other stuff is important to get to first. So that pretty much concludes our webinar. Um, feel free to join the Facebook group if you haven't already, where it's, we just talk about things in that group and we swap ideas, and it's only dentists and dental team members. And next month on Webinar Wednesday, what we're going to do is understanding organic SEO. We're going to spend a lot of time, a good 45 minutes, talking just about organic SEO. And coming soon, I haven't picked a date yet, but I'm getting a lot of questions about the Americans with Disabilities Act and how that affects us as dentists and dental websites and small business websites. So that's something that we're going to spend an entire webinar going over. It's important that you understand what's going on, what the law is, and where we are. And as always, here's my contact information. And I thank you all for coming. I will stick around if anybody has any questions. And if you want, I can open your mic if someone wants to talk directly. Thank you. Well, at this point, there don't seem to be any more questions, so I will close it out tonight, and I will thank you all for coming and for attending. You will get a you get an email in the next few days with a link to a copy of the recording, and of course, feel free to jump on the Facebook group if you have questions or if you have any ideas for other webinars that you would like to see, and I hope to see you there. Have a wonderful evening.